Good afternoon, everyone. I think we'll get started. My name is Marnie Escaf, and I am the Vice President and Site Lead at the Toronto General Hospital at uh, University Health Network. And I'm really pleased to, uh, to welcome you here today on behalf of the hospital, the Peter Monk Cardiac Centre, and our foundation to the first behind the scenes lecture of 2009. So behind the scenes lectures were developed to provide you, our donors, with exclusive views of how our scientists and clinicians work to develop the best therapeutics for our patients. It's also our way of saying thank you for your amazing support for our hospitals. I'm really, really delighted to see so many people in this room. It's funny, I actually came early at 1 o'clock. I had my time confused, and the room was empty, and I thought, oh my goodness. And so it's so great to come back now and see uh, so many people in this room and taking such active interest in our hospitals and in these lectures. There's so much to share with you about the breakthroughs and innovations in our exemplary research in our various programs that really transform patient care. So today's presentation showcases new innovative breakthroughs in treatment options at the Peter Monk Cardiac Center, a major program of University Health Network. So to hear more about our guest speaker, I would like to now introduce Linda Goldsack, the chair of the Peter Monk Cardiac Center campaign. Please welcome Linda. Thank you, Marnie. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, just wonderful to see you all here, and uh, I'd like to echo Marnie's welcome on behalf of the Peter Monk Cardiac Center. Um, I think your attendance here today speaks volumes of the caliber of the work that's being done here at the Peter Monk Cardiac Center, and we've come a long way and are thrilled to be able to share the advancement of cardiac health care with you this afternoon. It's an honor for me today to introduce today's speaker, Dr. Vijay Shohan. BJ, we were having a discussion earlier about how to pronounce your name, and uh, there's all sorts of ways to do it, apparently. <laughs> so when you come up, you're going to tell us exactly what it is. Dr. Shohan is a clinician scientist who specializes in electrical disorders of the heart. As director of interventional electrophysiology, his research is focused on unlocking the mysteries of heart disorders caused by arrhythmias. Now, what are arrhythmias, you may ask? Well, I, of course, had to become educated in this as well earlier years, so arrhythmias uh, basically refer to abnormal electrical activities, or rogue agents, as I once heard a doctor reference. These electrical disturbances are, of course, not like the pounding heart you recollect you had when you fell in love. They were lovely. These rogue currents are not. Anyway, I'm digressing. Dr. Shohan completed his cardiology residency and received his medical degree from the University of Ottawa in 1997. After a two-year basic research fellowship at Duke University in North Carolina and a two-year clinical research fellowship at the University of Western Ontario, he joined the Division of Cardiology at the Peter Monk Cardiac Center in 2001. During this time, Dr. Shohan has established a productive translational electrophysiology research program supported by the Heart and Stroke Foundation of Ontario and the Canadian Foundation for Innovation. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Vijay Shohan. Uh, thanks very much, Linda and Marnie. And, uh, uh, my name was fine. You did a great job. <laughs> um, I really would like to thank everyone in the foundation uh, for this opportunity to speak to you this afternoon. It's very exciting for me to present my research and really reach out uh, to the community, to our patients, uh, to uh, the public at large, uh, to just sort of understand what we do in the clinical electrophysiology department at our hospital. So. Um, as uh, Linda mentioned, uh, I'm a cardiologist, I'm also a scientist, and I spend a lot of my time looking after patients who have abnormal heart rhythm problems. Um, the focus of my research uh, is really to try and improve imaging of the electrical system of the heart in order to improve our ability to direct therapy for these life-threatening heart rhythm disorders. So I'd like to start by first explaining to everybody, before we talk about life-threatening heart rhythm disorders, let's talk about what a 
normal heart rhythm is. And I'd like to give you a little bit of anatomy, a little bit of physiology, all these little terms that we use to try and understand mechanisms. And I think you'll appreciate sort of where we're going with this. Um, this is the heart, and uh, this is the right ventricle, which pumps blood to the lungs. This is the left ventricle, which pumps blood to the rest of the body. And these two pumping chambers work in synchrony. And the reason they work in synchrony is because the electrical wires in the heart um, are shown here in white, and they conduct electricity in a very organized way from top to bottom, and they sweep around the heart in a very organized way. It's actually a, just a wonderful sequence of nature when it works properly. And as a result, you get this signal on the electrocardiogram. Many of you may have had electrocardiograms in the doctor's office. And what you see is a nice, regular electrical activity, which usually goes at about 60 to 80 beats per minute. Now, contrast that with this situation. This is a life-threatening heart rhythm disorder known as ventricular tachycardia. And it arises when there's a little focus somewhere in the ventricle. This is the main pumping muscle of the heart. And this little focus fires very rapidly, just like a, a lighthouse, for example. And when it fires very rapidly, you see this very rapid electrical activity on the electrocardiogram. And the heart rates can go so high, up to 200 beats per minute, that the heart is just not able to pump blood out effectively. And that's what causes patients to lose consciousness. This is another type of abnormal electrical activity that can cause lethal heart rhythm disorders. This is known as ventricular fibrillation. And the difference here is that you have many little lighthouses all over the ventricle, all over the muscle of the heart that are firing at the same time. And so look at what you get on the electrocardiogram, this chaotic electrical activity. And the heart is effectively not pumping anymore. So the blood pressure drops and this can cause sudden cardiac death. Now, I bring that term up because I want you to appreciate that sudden cardiac death is a major health problem in North America. When we look at the statistics, sudden cardiac death is the number one killer in North America, in the US and Canada. And last year alone, it claimed over 400,000 lives. This, in fact, is larger than the deaths from stroke lung cancer, breast cancer, and AIDS combined. So this is a serious health issue, and it is very important for us in our research to be able to identify the patients who are at risk of sudden cardiac death so that we can deliver appropriate therapy to prevent sudden cardiac death. So in order to do that, we need to understand what causes sudden cardiac death. And this pie chart basically looks back at some of the slides I just showed you. The underlying heart rhythm in sudden cardiac death is in fact in 80% of patients either ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation. So it's these rapid heartbeats that we have to address. When you look at the patients who have sudden cardiac death, over 80% of them have some type of narrowing in the arteries that supply blood to the heart. These are patients that have had heart attacks at some point. So this cartoon sort of shows what causes sudden cardiac death. And there are many scenarios, but let's uh, work with the theme of narrowing in the arteries for the moment. Here's a cartoon of an artery and it's getting progressively more narrow, and so the blood supply to the heart is decreasing. And when that happens, the electrical system gets irritated, and that can suddenly cause you to go into ventricular fibrillation. There are other scenarios where if the artery blocks completely, then you end up with a heart attack, 